the image that you just saw was my latest image of the Andromeda Galaxy and my best yet of that target. And uh, I should also probably say welcome to my channel as this is my first ever video. And yeah, I will show you how I took this image and how you can possibly also take an image which is uh, quite close to what I just made only maybe a little bit better, because you actually know how to do astrophotography. Alright, so this is how I find my target. And I usually before the night, and before any night, I go into Stellarium and find the target uh, just looking through what I can see during the night. And I here went to do M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. And uh, then I look up this uh, graph that tells me when Andromeda is the highest. Now this tells me that I'm a bit early for the season for Andromeda because it isn't at its highest before the middle of August, uh, October, I mean. Uh, but, you know, it raises high enough, so... And it also says that it will be up for the entire night because we, we just had, don't have so much astronomical darkness yet so it will be for uh, for most of the night start in the northeast and make its way over to the south during the night and using this information you can plan your imaging runs uh, many nights ahead even when it's cloudy you can figure out what will be up when and when it really gets clear you can be prepared before we hop out and about and uh, take some images of space from my backyard, uh, I thought I'd uh, talk, talk you through a little bit of our setup before we set up. So we have this guy. It's the lens for the night. It's a 70 to 200 millimeter. We use it at seven at 200 millimeter uh, focal length. Uh, on the full frame DSLR that I'm filming with, filming with right now, so we'll get a about I think six degrees field of view. And uh, we'll not use this mount uh, just because it's freaking workhouse, and it's also like 15 kilos. So if I don't need to, I'm not gonna take this out. Uh, I'm gonna use my tracker instead. Which is just, uh, it can do 3 minute unguided subs quite easily, so uh, at least if I use some time for polar alignment. Uh, now for the target, it is the M for, M for, <coughs> M31 Andromeda Galaxy, which is our closest galactic neighbor, and it's also just a freaking beautiful target. It's also so huge that you can easily do it untracked, I did it uh, last spring. You know, you get the core usually quite good, and the outer rim is kind of, nah, not so well, but, but, it's, but you get a quite a decent image, just uh, with a standard camera and a lens. So if you haven't tried astrophotography uh, with just a tripod, I, su I suggest you go out and try that right now. I I'm thinking about putting out some videos on interact astrophotography in the future, but for now I suggest we go out and set up. to see a star pattern and it's easier to see on the live feed itself but the thing is that the bottom of the mask should create this X pattern with a central spike which we should try to get as centered as possible and when that is in the center we have perfect focus now that we have the target centered up and we have focus and uh, everything is ready we can start figuring out our exposure time and so we put our intervalometer into it. 
And since we also are polar aligned, we can do our first test exposure. So then we need to head over to our camera, which is here. And uh, we must decide on an ISO setting. Now, because of the exposure time, I'm going to go with 1600. I think that's going to be pretty good, so we'll try that. Now, looking at the image, we, I saw a slight star trailing. Which is quite normal with this tracker. I didn't use a lot of time on polar alignment, so I'm going to step this down a bit and push it down 30 seconds and see if that's better. Just need to find the point where you are just not star trailing. Alright, on a 19 second exposure we have perfect round stars, so we're gonna stick with that. Try to get as long exposures as we can, you just gotta go in and charge me battery, and then we can uh, start integrating. Now that I have recharged the battery of my DSLR, we are ready to start the integration of the night with 90 second exposures and ISO 1600 at M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Alright, so a couple of days have passed. Um, we have taken our flats from every night, but we are missing our dark and biases. Now, the darks are, uh, are then temperature sensitive, so we'll need the exact temperature of the night, and then make uh, frames that doesn't have any light hitting the sensor, and then stack about 30 to 40 to create a master dark for both the 90 second, second exposures, and from the other night where, where I managed a 3 minute exposure. Alright, so here I'll show you how I organize my files. So, by going into the um, uh, images on uh, my camera, I can find the lights, flats and biases, and also the sensor temperature, which will be important for capturing our darks, which we'll do inside with the use of a freezer and a, and a refrigerator. So, well, how I find the temperature is I went into the GNU image manipulation program, into image and metadata and here we have Canon temperature and it's 10 degrees and also gives us all sorts of things but you kind of have to go down the list you see I'm around there on the list and here are all kinds of different things that you know everything about the image basically and uh, using the temperature we know how to make our darks <laughs> Alright, so here is our freezer with our camera inside, the cable running from the freezer and to the computer. And with the EOS backyard, it can write darks with the temperatures. And that is how we will make our darks with 90 second uh, long exposure and ISO 1600. And with those values, we will get uh, some nice darks. They will vary a bit in temperature, but we'll choose those that are plus minus five degrees of our goal, and it will likely work out quite fine. And now for this next part, we'll do our bias frames. It is the fastest shutter we can possibly have, with the same ISO as we had our previous nights. <laughs> Here we are in Deep Sky Stacker and we'll go into Open Picture Fails and we'll select uh, lights from different nights and put those in different groups with their own calibration frames that is dark, spices and flats and uh, after we'll load it, all of them in and check them all so Deep Sky Stacker actually knows that they are there we can go into the registration and stacking settings and check that everything is correct and that our star registration uh, number is, you know, so that it doesn't find too many stars and not too few. 
and so that it can also stack in pots. So you know, if you have only one star, you'll likely fail. But if you have like 10,000, you'll likely crash your computer. At least if you have a crappy laptop like I do. And also remember to check the stack after registering, so that you are sure that uh, the computer will go through the entire stacking process, even though you are sleeping while the computer is being tortured. And after some careful processing, I can now show you my image of our closest neighbor, M31, the Andromeda Galaxy.